How much water should you drink? If you've heard the hype, you'd probably say eight glasses a day. But is it true? No, in a single word, no. There really is no evidence to support that view. So it seems very unlikely that this notional eight glasses of water has any basis in fact. So which areas are you looking for, Michael? Well, the Indeed, a study conducted by neuroscientist Dr Michael Farrell suggests you can drop the mantra of eight a day and rely on your thirst instead. We were interested in knowing how the brain responds when people drink water that they want, when they're thirsty, and we contrasted that with drinking water when they were not thirsty, when they were drinking water that was in excess of wants and needs. The study required a hard-earned thirst, so the participants exercised for an hour, sweating out 1% of their body weight. My lips are pretty dry, I've been licking them for the last 10 minutes or so. As we sweat and we're losing water but hanging on to salt, generally the level of saltiness of the blood increases, so too the saltiness of the fluids around cells. And this is the signal that is picked up by the osmoreceptive regions in the brain and in turn generates the sensation of thirst. Our osmoreceptors in our brains can pick up a 1 to 2 percent change in the salt concentration of your blood and body fluids, so it's very sensitive. Here we go. An MRI analysed the patient's brain activity as their thirst was quenched. We simply use a syringe and some tubing to squirt small volumes of water into his mouth periodically and we're very interested in what happens in the brain at that moment when he's swallowing. That water really has hit the spot. Yeah, really very nice. As you drink, this region of the cingulate cortex, the pregenual cingulate, becomes activated and we interpret this as representing that pleasant sensation you experience upon sipping water when you're thirsty. But that changed when the participants were given more water than they needed to simply satisfy their thirst. Then the sensation of drinking water becomes unpleasant and that unpleasantness is associated with activity in a distinct region of the cingulate cortex, the mid-cingulate cortex that we can see here in blue. This unpleasantness also appeared to activate the periaqueductal grey, or PAG. It's a primitive region that's been shown to inhibit swallowing in animals. So with the PAG saying, stop swallowing, it seemed the motor cortex, a more conscious region of the brain, was needed to override the PAG and help kickstart the swallowing. Yes, yeah, certainly it goes from something that you want to do and, and become, comes very naturally, that swallowing action, to something you really have to think about. We are interpreting our results as a mechanism that protects us against excessive drinking of water. In fact, it's possible to overhydrate. In very rare cases, drinking too much water has been fatal. Even excessive drinking during intense exercise carries risk. The brain will put in place mechanisms to help the cells in the brain hang on to their water as the water outside the cells becomes saltier. This mechanism isn't turned on and off quickly, so if a great volume of water is ingested, this is when the risk occurs of swelling and potentially death. The crucial thing about this water intoxication is the rapidity at which you ingest the water. If it's done very slowly, it's probably not going to have uh, very adverse effects, but if it happens rapidly, then it can be uh, very dangerous. The fact is, you get around 20 to 40% of the water you need each day simply from the food you eat. And even moderate tea and coffee intake will hydrate you, as their diuretic qualities are quite low. But the same can't be said for alcohol. So you can trust your thirst, unless you're 70 or over.
while older men had levels of thirst similar to younger men, it was found they drank only half as much in response. It seems their thirst mechanism turned off too soon. They were getting enough to satiate their thirst, but they were not getting enough to rehydrate them. That puts the elderly at greater risk of dehydration in hot weather. If you want to make sure that you're drinking the right amount of fluid, probably an easy way to do it would be to weigh yourself uh, in the morning and then make sure you don't drop too far below that body weight. And in case you're wondering, excessive amounts of water won't flush out your toxins. After reviewing the science, Kidney Health Australia rejects the target of eight glasses a day. Drinking eight glasses of water may be well in excess of need on some days and totally inadequate on others. So it doesn't reflect the reality of how we live.